we have a story about something that I don't really something I'm not really that familiar with in terms of the individuals involved but I think it kind of speaks to a wider um, theme that I've kind of or wider ideology or a wider kind of POV mantra whatever you may call it that I've always held and that's kind of been a little bit controversial when it comes to guys being involved in women's business especially when it comes to the sort of thing that i'm doing here at the moment cultural commentary cultural commentary sorry podcasting um whatever it may be shooting the shit i just think there's maybe because the gossip when it comes to kind of female biz female led sort of stuff is a lot more juicier than stuff that you might see in culture maybe it's a lot more harder to kind of get involved in, in terms of researching the topics having knowledge of the topics being able to speak about it you know um maybe off the cuff whatever maybe a bit more harder than speaking about topics that concerning with oh if you go on a date with a girl should you pay all this sort of shit like it's just the same old regurgitated bullshit i understand how easy it is but i also think that kind of stuff when it comes to dudes it has this ceiling and after a time when you just keep hearing dudes consistently t talking about alpha this and girl that and doing this and being that it's just it just becomes a little bit nauseating and i feel like a guy that kind of spends their time worrying or kind of pontificating about how they sound or present themselves to women, especially on the podcast with other dudes, usually I feel like, number one, you probably don't get that many girls. Number two, you're probably not the kind of dude other dudes should want to hang around with. And number three, you are the kind of guy that was that's kind of that likes being in women's business right you're the kind of guy that kind of fights with girls argues with girls like this really gross shit that you don't really i would never kind of condone or never encourage or never say would be something that i would like from a male friend of mine right they're definitely not i definitely don't have any friends like that don't get me wrong i'm not the most um social guy in the world especially compared to some of these people i want to speaking about but for the friends that i have i try not to hang around with people who like to get themselves involved in the middle of women's business or who like to just speak bad about women that they know in public it just feels a little bit yucky and i think this is a great lesson to be learned for most dudes because what ends up happening when you do get involved in women's business you might be able to get you know you might be able to maybe win no you might be able to maybe steal a march on her you might be able to get a few jabs off quickly right before she baby basically gets her flipping her um her kind of balance in place or basically figures out where she's at but the moment a lady figures out the, the kind of the the landscape of what's going on sizes up her opponent and then is ready to kind of unload you know verbal flipping venom on you you're definitely going to lose when it comes to that idea you're definitely going to lose when it comes to a back and forth with a woman on social media there's no way you're going to win that especially if you're a dude who kind of doesn't want to get involved in women's business because there's no le there's no level that she can't get low there's no level that she can't go to but then you have an ego so you don't want to get to that level you're just going to stand like, just ask oh, i'm going to fight you and then immediately the most the as soon as you start talking about aggression and physicality, you've obviously lost the argument. So it's obviously not a good idea to get involved in the first place. So this is a good example of why. <clears throat> this is a story courtesy of the Shadeborough. It features an influencer called Briley, um, claps back at a comedian called Kojo Anim for accusing her of being broke. Now again, I don't know any of these people, but from what I've seen, it feels like the girl won. Like she won very very easily and again it was such an unnecessary beef from what it looks like because it feels like they were friends maybe beforehand they maybe some had some sort of cordial relationship maybe they were hooking up before i don't know but they did seem that they were cool so for it to go this left is really sad because you know like i said before in previous shows you know the older you get in life especially if you become successful it's really difficult to find real friends right it's really difficult to find people that you can legitimately spend time with and you enjoy their company so to come to this sort of place in life this level of success and to finally find that people that you maybe thought were somebody you can maybe spend maybe 10 20 years of friendship with later on in the life are somebody that kind of you know have been plotting your downfall <laughs> in the background it must be somewhat weird to kind of reconcile with but anyway let's go through the slides and you can see what the argument was about and how i feel like the girl absolutely destroyed him and again it's kind of deserved again for putting yourself in women's business so stay out of that if you're a dude um this is a screenshot basically i've got on screen that features um Bradley basically putting a text over an image that shows i guess one of her friends sitting with this comedian guy called what's his name kojo anim and they're somewhere i guess in dubai judging from the scenery and judging what she's talking about and she says the following is this you at kojo i mean lying through your fake teeth of these <laughs> so number one she gets that this is the thing i've always said about women when it comes to attacking men 
women have a really good way when it comes to verbally attacking men of just getting to no i think this is just advice for women if you want to attack a dude and get to his heart and actually make him feel vulnerable and make him cry just attack his insecurity that he's obviously trying to mask up whether it's lifting weights whether it's getting hair plugs whether it's teeth whether it's eyes glass whatever just attack an insecurity that you know he clearly has they tried to correct and you basically kill the dude like comment on the guy's fade and say it's a bit dusty or it's a bit wrong or the beard's not lined up properly or it's a bit patchy and you you've got a guy thinking about that for months and months on until so the fact that she went straight for the teeth i knew the fight was over before it started it says here, you're embarrassing, bro. Calling a guy bro too if you're a girl. That's an extra little point there as well. It says, you're talking about broke. Your friend paid for everything. Absolute loser. You absolute loser, right? Um, again, she's talking to him in a very, in a very kind of mocking big sister sort of way, right? Um, let's, play, let's, play, let's play a game. This is a brutal bit. Let's play a game. Screenshot your bank account and I'll screenshot mine. You record your house and I'll record my penthouse, you absolute bellend. I love it. English insults are the best. Um, me and Nyasha was laughing at your poor friend being used by you to pay for everything. The friend, I'm not sure if that's poor, if he just got like a, if he just got like a, a you know, a bit of friendly fire there, or if that was basically her just describing, he was poor, I don't know. Um, I did not see your wallet the whole vacation, <laughs> acting like your friend is a sugar daddy. <laughs> saying a guy has a guy friend has a sugar daddy that's like that's horrible um i did not ask for anything you waste man uh mr e-man i think e-man yeah it's paid for my cab one time and i did not ask mr e-man is a real man who offers without exchange your comedy clubs could not get us on his level jesus christ i've got time today satan <laughs> this girl i've got i've got receipts for every lie you told that podcast and sorry on that podcast and i'm truly disgusted that i ever considered you a friend you hate successful black women and that's your problem trying to tarnish my name with lies i'm in shock if i tagged the people you talked about in dubai you would be finished i know i shouldn't stop so i knew i shouldn't stoop this low um and you shouldn't stoop to this low life level, but this man at Kojo, I mean, she keeps tagging him all the time. So basically saying, look, I'm, I'm putting your name on this, brother. You came for me and I'm going to come for your neck. Um, and it's the biggest fraud out here. Literally sat there and made up lies to get views. For what? Because I forgot to return the sunglasses you left on his on this very table. I was doing you a favor picking them up because Nyasha didn't care. What a way to create, what a way to treat someone that supported you jesus christ she's already slipping in little things about my friend doesn't even rate you like oh all these little honestly women when it comes to verbal attack they're just they they it's it's very difficult i think the only person that could uh, brutally attack a woman when it comes to verbal attacks would be maybe a fat dude because most fat dudes have had to sustain i've had to put up with years and years of abuse right from other guys maybe other girls teasing them family members so usually i found most fat guys are either funny or they're really good at dissing, really, really good. They're really quick. So maybe that's the only person I could imagine who might have the ability to maybe get a girl and really be able to attack her verbally. But even then, I still think a woman would be able to know how to kind of pick apart a fat dude too, because every woman's gone through a Philippine body conscious fat sort of phase, so they know exactly what to say to get at you. So I don't know, man. I don't know. I really don't. The only one I've actually seen who's been able to do it really well when it comes to brutalizing a woman, when it comes to verbal attacking them, is Cat Williams. There's a clip of Cat Williams on some radio show where I don't know what happens, but I think they're cool at the beginning. And then something happens where maybe Cat Williams maybe misconstrues something or she maybe miss. I don't know. Something happens where the energy switches and as a comedian, as a kind of sassy dude being petty. He just doesn't let it go. And he just keeps going at her, going at her, going at her, and just to a point where the other people in the room have to kind of get in and start laughing and making jokes to kind of mask the fact that he's absolutely destroying. That's the only time I've seen um a guy be able to kind of destroy a woman like in that kind of scenario and again this is i think she was a radio host too so she's obviously confident on the mic bombastic sort of personality obviously funny in her own right and then she was just like not able to kind of withstand it so i can only imagine what just a regular dude is gonna do when a girl like this goes is i was talking to you like this is like yeah 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 um but that was what she said um the second bit she says here um 
Um, literally sat there and made up the lies to get views for what because I forgot to do um, we fell out with Nyesha you fell out with Nyesha because you're both so alike stubborn and narcissistic oh she's obviously going after a friend too you both made my Dubai trip hell with your disgusting selfish behaviour y'all deserve each other oh so I guess this is Nyesha the girl okay cool so he's basically telling her the girl that you love or the girl that you're kind of trying to get with doesn't rate you and you'll probably be perfect for each other because you both stink personality wise it's like oof um, this must be the table I didn't want to go pay for another screenshot i went to my hotel room to get changed when i came back four hours later and yes i had paid for her table it's her table why would why wouldn't she pay for it this is why you gotta watch the company you keep because this is the most depressing holiday i've been on <sighs> there's something about again I'm, I'm sure this girl's an influence or something there's something about these kind of um hot instagram girls when they go on a holiday together what is it i've seen american girls go through it obviously uk girls what is it about girls when they go on a holiday together where Again, maybe I'm I'm being a little bit, um, what you call it, selective or this anecdotal because there's only people I follow, only people I see doing this sort of stuff. But I don't really see the same thing with, but but is there a lot of guy group influence? Is there a lot of guys? Is there like a hot guy in, influencer scene? It must exist, right? And do they all go on holiday together? I don't know. Do they? I'm not too sure. I guess they would do, right? If you'd go and, I don't know, they'd go to flipping Dom the Dominican Republic and places like Brazil and stuff to just get, you know, to just smash as many birds as they can. But there's something about girls when it comes to these influencer groups where they go to these places on holiday and they just always eventually end up falling out or maybe discovering parts of their, pers discovering parts of people, everyone's personality they didn't really like. I guess in general anyway, holidays with friends are always like that. You either kind of become closer or you discover bits about people that you didn't know that you didn't obviously like. And then it becomes a time where you kind of be split and apart. Um, but yeah, it just seems to be a common theme. Another screenshot here shows a, a conversation, SMS conversation between Kojo and I'm guessing this girl where um, they're going back and forth. And he's saying, of course, I asked you to leave them. Why, so why didn't you just do that? Like I said, um, the queue was really long. My bad. If I knew who you were leaving, I would have had waited. The queue was long. Brittany come on hon. okay that's him talking on the left she say brother what do you want me to do question mark i need my shades he says then come back and pick them up bro you left them i'm coming now he says okay cool let me know when you're hit downstairs what's your own room number for when i'm there over some crappy ray-ban so he was obviously throwing a fit again these are things that happen on holiday that you don't discover about people until you're on holiday with them like how kind of you know pedantic how maybe uh tight people are um the chaos that they have in general you don't really discover it. and again like i said it's either you learn to embrace it and love that part of their personality or it puts you off of them entirely or you just become that kind of person that says you know what i'm not going to go on a holiday with you but i'm still going to be your friend that, that can kind of happen as well that can be a kind of reasonable way to kind of go about things another screenshot here oh yeah this screenshot of him talking on a podcast about the whole occasion right the guy mm. It was one day birthday so we just got we got all, we just ordered down everything on the menu so that everyone can eat a little bit of everything yeah, man. This girl come up there drinking, drinking. So he's already talking too, again, maybe because he's with boys, but he's already talking too enthusiastically about another girl. Like, you just don't... Okay, I've, maybe it's just me, but I've never been that kind of guy anyway, even when it comes to, you know, pillow talking and all that sort of stuff. Like, you just don't do that. You know what I mean? You share an intimate moment with somebody, you keep it yourself, it's a private thing, whatever. But you don't go and talk about it to all your friends they might know cool but you don't describe in exact detail what you got up to if anything in my life what i've kind of noticed in general the guys that usually are super descriptive about what they get up to with girls and stuff in kind of crazy detail are either guys that number one don't get many girls or number two guys who are wrestling with their own sexuality i've usually found it's a really crazy thing to say but i've usually found it's always been one of the two things either the guy is lying about the amount of girls that he sleeps with similar to like a jay from the in-betweeners right like he's always talking about you know the female anatomy and stuff right you always know that okay this guy definitely hasn't been with many women if any or they're definitely people who are struggling super hard with their sexuality and they're not comfortable enough to come out to their friends or to explore in any way shape or form so they're kind of overcompensating by talking about people in you know crazy crazy detail that's not really even needed um, that's usually a big sign but all this kind of bombastic talk again is usually just liars as well because I've had a lot of them I know most boys have kind of gone through it I've said I've, I've t told a story here many times of one of my friends I grew up with when we were like 12 or something pretending he was hooking up with a girl in bed and it was a pillow I just what 
guys do some when it comes to girls guy can guys can lie like lie a lot so when i, I so i shouldn't be surprised when they're on the podcast and you're maybe having a couple of drinks and you want to talk about your trip where you sort of feel like you want to unload and but it's just it's lame i'm not really down for it i think it's lame can drink and eat your food just going all of that and you know when the people bust it down yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then he obviously he's joking about that. And then a screenshot, it says here, I guess it's her typing over it. She says, to a dinner that I was invited to, to a dinner you was asking me to try this and meet. It's amazing. Oof. It sounds like to me, maybe my guy was trying to hook up with one of them or maybe he was wanting to hook up. Yeah, maybe it's one of those things. Maybe he was trying to shoot his shot with both at the same time. He got Cole, he got a, he got a, not a good response from one, got maybe a mediocre response from the other, and then he just did that thing that guys do where you just try and you know uh, both your butters in it and just kind of threw them both out of the flipping tub, maybe in that regard. I don't know, but it just it's a bit mad, isn't it, that you'd go from throwing out those kind of mad innuendos to then suddenly you're on a podcast bad minding some or bad mouthing somebody. Um, it says here to a dinner Nyesha told me to go to and have fun just because I've I've uh, I've fallen out with him doesn't mean you can't go have fun rotted man these girls are actually nice like imagine two girls going on holiday together and one saying don't worry go out and dinner with him even though I don't like the guy you should go and this is how you thank them yo yo to a dinner that I had sat I had to sit too awkwardly while you was trying to impress American girls by downing UK girls imagine the banter imagine the game imagine the lack of game from this type of dude to to resort to hacky oh uk girls are like this good girls you get like ugh. to a dinner you didn't even pay for i've i've got secondhand embarrassment for you my bro <laughs> Can we get some more? yeah and this girl and i'm just look at this girl just eating my money Meanwhile, buffoon and my bridging are sitting, are, are sitting on the other side of the fucking pool, yeah? Yeah. Just watching the turn up. Just what? And they've both got shades on. So they're kind of looking at the gaps. Yeah. <laughs> they're looking, but they're not really. You know yeah. what I mean? They're facing yeah. the other way, but they're yeah. looking at three o'clock. They're looking at three o'clock. This buffoon, check Blood. this out, bro. Let me hear this one. This buffoon turns up. They get a table for themselves. Themselves, but it's not paid for. The buffoon gets up, comes over to more. 100. So these girls, okay, next one. it was one of their birthdays, so we just got my boy and says, oh, um, they're telling us that our table's going to cost a thousand dirhams. <laughs> let that marinate, no, let that marinate, man. <laughs> Hear the cheek of the buffoon, fam. <laughs> the prize <laughs> that she is. <laughs> I'll, I'll repeat that. <laughs> they're telling us <laughs> that is called a cost of thousands. <laughs> Again, I don't know these people. I don't know this podcast or the name of the fence quarter, the rap party, right? From the sign there. I don't know the girl, I don't know the guys, but from my experience, this sounds like a lot of bitterness. This sounds like a lot of anger. This sounds like a lot of um rejection, basically being um and they're using it as a as a as an excuse to basically badmind these girls, I think, or badmind them, in the, in my experience. It doesn't sound like this was actually a big problem. It sounds like the underlying issue was that maybe some of them maybe felt, I don't know, you know, and sometimes you go out with a girl, or go out with a type of people, maybe you think there's it's one thing and you get there and it's another thing. I don't know, whatever. Something happened, something changed, the climate went different and then suddenly they then saw all these things which, all the things that they probably wouldn't have cared about beforehand they started to pick apart and whatnot um but anyway let's skip past all this stuff because this is boring listen to this guy talk about this sort of shit the fit, the bro you're not paying for the, nothing because the, the part that's interesting yeah at some point i can't see my the part i thought was interesting was that after the fact when once all this was all done it was the way that okay let, let's 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 read one more of her screenshots because her, her commentary on this has been quite good a girl it's just yeah um the last one, yeah. The last screenshot, she says, let's say what Kojo was saying was true. What man that actually has money in 2021 going on 2022 has a problem with taking care of a woman when they are in his presence? Go to Nigeria or Ghana. This is light work, bare minimum. Only broke, 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 dusty men will sit up on a podcast and cry wolf while in the same breath promote sleeping with prostitutes <laughs> and will only go to a date with a woman if she's having sex with him. That's a good point. Not going to lie. Um, you are an embarrassment and I feel sorry for you and all the men who think like you. You could not pull a single girl in Dubai because 
because you're just not that guy. Look, guys, call, a girl calling you bro and saying you're not that guy and saying the girl that you're into wasn't even feeling you that what like and calling you dusty is just. I don't know how you can come back from that. Men, and which explains why, you know, the next video, you see why he looks the way he does. Men with less than you have more game than you. And again, I like what she pointed out because she's like, look, it's not even about money. I'm not even talking about money or Rollies or Bugattis or whatever, or, or their miles, whatever the people, those people wear, right? In terms of flashy stuff in Dubai. I'm just talking about being a good guy and good company and a good hang. Because I'd imagine a place like Dubai, right, where it's quite materialistic and guys are basically trying to impress skills with their material goods and all that nonsense. If you come through with a modic with a minuscule amount of game and you don't even you have a fucking Casio on, you could probably end up pulling quite a few girls out there if that's your kind of scene. Because you're just a good hang. You don't mind buying some drinks. You got cool things to do that aren't just the typical stuff. You're fun to hang out with. The, the, all the waiters like you I don't know those kind of vibes right that might just be a good kind of antidote to all the kind of really pompous up their own ass sort of like entitled dudes that kind of walk around those kind of areas I kind of think that if they act a certain way that's how they're going to get yours I'd imagine who knows maybe it's not true but who knows um da, 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 you have you, you have an angry and dark spirit about you and you're not the guy I met a few years ago please see Cape healing and restoration because you are bleeding over people who never hurt you and in the next video, to make it to basically to end the point why I say you, men shouldn't get involved in women's business, the guy who's obviously out there accusing this girl of whatever and, you know, basically um, bad mouthing her name, then gets on his on Instagram and decides to make this video where he kind of looks like he's being, you know, um, th there's a gun basically off the side of the screen somewhere or something, or he's been put, left in hostage, or he looks like he's been crying all day. His beard doesn't look as trim as it did in the other picture. He looks a bit more dour. He actually looks what have I think she mentioned his age. He's like four. He actually looks more his age here than he did on the other podcast. So, in the space of however many days or weeks, he's aged like a flipping, you know, like a fucking avocado, which has been mad. And <laughs> he's got a completely different tone. This, again, keep in mind if you're listening to the audio version of this only. This is still the same guy that was talking earlier about seeing this girl eating my money, right? This is the same girl talking with that kind of vim. Now hear how his voice sounds. Hilarious. What's going on, people? So, obviously, <laughs> there's been a lot said about my name this whole day um, on the blogs and um, a situation that I originally brought to light a couple of weeks ago. Man's um, voice went mad octaves in that one little five time. second clip, right? Um, I'm doing this video because I've taken time to kind of think, think about again. my actions um, on the podcast and looking back at that moment and watching it back again. Um, there's a lot of things that I'm, I'm, I'm not proud of um, and I, I regret doing it. <clears throat> one of them being... Um, bringing something private um, to the public. Um, I was very, very, very angry at the situation that I spoke about. Um, what are you angry about? You know, something was happening with my friend, a close friend. What's going on? One more and then, we'll, and then we'll end it. So, obviously, there's been a lot said about my... Okay, okay. Then watch it happen kind of thing. And... Name um, how this it, whole day... Um, allow it and uh, allow it. Come on, just let me play this one video. Just please. sit there and watch it happen, yeah. kind of thing. And um, how it made me, how it left me feeling wasn't really, really good. So I reacted instead of um, responding. Um, and I went on my podcast and um, I just put something that was private out there publicly. And I maybe could have addressed it publicly, but I was so livid that I am. Um, I didn't, I didn't do that. Um, those that do know about me, those that do care about me. Anyway, no one cares. But anyway, the point is, if you're a dude, stay the fuck out of women's business. If you have a problem with another lady, be a man, pull her to one side, speak to her. Especially at the time when it's happening. Because, you know, usually I found if you want to get into an argument with a woman, try and bring up something that she did a minute or 10 seconds before. It's always going to end badly. Try and address it at the time, if you can, in a calm, reasonable way. If you cannot... Do what most guys do 
and just suck it in and internalize the pain and take it on somebody else. That's what most people do in their walk of life because they know it's not going to end well if they get into some sort of verbal spat with a female, even if it's your sister, if it's your mom, if it's your girlfriend, whatever. You know it's always going to end well. You're never going to come out of it looking well. And especially on social media, especially in these kind of scenarios where you're an influencer and you're a cultural commentator and stuff, you're going to end up looking like an absolute bellend, as the girl mentioned, or donor, or a wallad, or just a waste man in general, man. Like, again, I'm not, I've never been a fan of it. I think all those guys that talk about about women's business too much they've always got a common theme in them there's a very there's a lot of moistness a lot of kind of h2o a lot of drip a lot of like drippy not in a good way about them like you look at the side mans you look at this guy like, they're all the same they're all cuffing the same cloth um yeah it's it's not even worth even commentating to one even more any longer don't get involved in with women's business don't